Hi there, my name is Albana Gashi and I'm a student at the University of Houston downtown. Today I am going to be reading to you a book called Many Moons. Uh, I chose this book because although it's not an 8th grade book, it uh, tells a story and it has, um, it has you wondering about how big is the moon, what it looks like, um, how far it is, and those are some questions that I want my students to be thinking about before I'm going into the lecture. Um, the book is about 48, 50 pages, so I'm not going to be reading the whole thing. I got it at the Houston Library, so you're welcome to go check it out, I, but I will be reading a couple pages. Okay, so Many Moons by James Dorber. Many moons. Once upon a time, in a kingdom by the sea, there lived a little princess named Lenore. She was 10 years old, going on 11. One day, Lenore fell ill of a surfeit of raspberry tarts and took to her bed. The royal physician came to see her and took her temperature and felt her pulse and made her sick, stick out her tongue. The royal physician was worried. He sent for the king, Lenore's father, and the king came to see her. I will get you anything your heart desires, the king said. Is there anything your heart desires? Yes, said the princess. I want the moon. If I can have the moon, I will be well again. Now the king had a great many wise men who always got for him anything he wanted. So he, got, he told his daughter that, he, that she could have the moon. Then he went to the throne room and pulled a bell cord, three long poles and a short pole, and presently the Lord High Chamberlain came into the room. The Lord High Chamberlain was a great fat man who, was thick, who wore thick glasses which made his eyes seem twice as big as they really were. This made the Lord High Chamberlain seem twice as wise as he really was. I was just to get... I want to get the moon, said the king. The princess Leonard wants the moon. She, if she can have the moon, she will get well. The moon, exclaimed the Lord High Chamberlain, his eyes widened. This made him look for four times as wise as he really was. Yes, the moon, said the king. Moon, moon. Get it tonight, tomorrow, at, at, la at, la at latest. The Lord High Chamberlain wiped his forehead with a handkerchief and then blew his nose loudly. I had a great many thing. I have a. I have gotten a great many things for you and men in my time, Your Majesty. He said, "It just happens that I, I have with me a list of things I have got for you in my, my time." He pulled a long scroll of parchment out of his pocket. Let me see now. He glanced at the list, frowning. I have got ivory apes and peacocks, rubies, opals, and emeralds, black arched pink elephants and blue puddles, gold bugs, scarves, and flies in amber, hummingbirds, tongue, angels, feather, and unicorns, horns, giants, magics, and mermaids, frankincense, hamburgers, and mar and dancing one and a pound of butter, two dozen eggs, and a sack of sugar. Sorry, my wife wrote that in there. I don't remember any blue puddles, said the king. It says blue puddles right here on the list, and they are checked off with a little check mark, said the Lord High Chamberlain. So there must have been blue puddles you just forgot. Never mind the blue puddle, said the king. What I want is the moon. I have sent as far as Smark Smarkand and Arby and Zinzibar to get things for you, your majesty, said the Lord High Chamberlain. But the moon is out of the question. It is thirty five miles thirty five thousand miles away and it is bigger than the moon than the room the princess lies in. Furthermore, it is more of molten copper. I cannot get the moon for you, blue puddle says the moon no. The king flew into a rage and told Lord High Chamberlain to leave the room and send the royal wizard to his throne room. The royal wizard was a little thin man with a long face. He wore a high red peaked hat covered with silver stars and a long blue robe covered with golden owls. 
His face grew very pale when the king told him he wanted the moon for his little daughter and that he expected the royal wizard to get it. I have worked a great deal of magic for you in my time, your majesty, said the royal wizard. As a matter of fact, I just happen to have in my pocket a list of wizards. Wizardries. I have formed for you. He drew a paper from a deep pocket of his robe. It begins, Dear Royal Wizard, I am returning here with the so-called Philosopher's Stone, which you claimed. No, that isn't it. The Royal Wizard brought a long scroll of parchment from another pocket of his robe. Here is, here it is, he said. Now his, now let's see. I have squeezed blood out of turnips for you and turnips out of blood. I have produced rabbits out of silk hats and silk hats out of rabbits. I have conjured up flowers, tambourines and doves out of nowhere and now nowhere out of the flowers, tambourines and doves. I have brought you the divine rods, magic wands and crystal spheres in which to behold the future. I have compounded filled Filters, urges, and potions to cure heartbreaks, surfeits, and ringing in the ears. I have made you my own special mixture of wolf band, nightshade, and eagle tears to ward off witches, demons, and things that can that go bump into in the night. I have given you seven league boots, the golden touch, and a clock of invisibility. It didn't work, said the king. The clock of his belt didn't work. Yes, it did, said the wall. No, it didn't, said the king. I kept bumping into things the same as ever. The clock is supposed to make you invisible, said the royal wizard. It is not supposed to keep you from bumping into things. All I know is that I kept bumping into things, said the king. The royal wizard looked at his list again. I got you, he said. Horns from offense sand from the sandman and gold from the rainbow also a spoon of thread a paper needles and a lamp of beeswax sorry those are things my wife wrote down for me to get her what i want you to do now said the king is to get me the moon the prince Lenor wants the moon and when she gets it she will be well again nobody can get the moon said the royal wizard it is 150,000 miles away and it is made of green cheese and it is twice as big as these places. The king flew into another rage and sent the royal wizard back to his cave. Then he rang, rang a gong and summoned the royal mathematician. The royal mathematician was a bald-headed nearsighted man with a skull cap on his head and a pencil behind his, each ear. He wore a black suit with white numbers on it. Okay, and I'm going to stop right there. Um, so there's about, there's more pages to read and it talks about, uh, kind of has the same about what people thought the moon was, how far it was and what it was made out of and how they, um, they can never get to the moon. So that's all the reading for today. Thank you.